Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Carlson. Today is the last day of February. I cannot even believe that I'm filming this actually today on the 28th. Got up real early, came down here, had a lot of work going on over the weekend, some family in town. It was a fantastic time. I hope all of you enjoyed the nice, beautiful weather out this weekend, although the 87 degrees did feel kind of warm late Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Still beautiful weather. I hope you loved it. Hope you're having a great morning today, enjoying your cup of strangely warm coffee. One of the highlights of our show today. What I'm going to be covering and starting a new series that I'm going to try and do once a month is to hit up products that I use that are made in the good old US of A. I try to find things all the time that I can buy uh, that I use on a regular basis that are from right here in the United States. I would also move further to try and default into products that are made in Florida. Uh, so I'm going to highlight one of those today and I will um, cover these and try to keep this as an ongoing series because I think it's important to support the country. Uh, right now you can see the global issues going on related to oil and natural gas. That creates issues for all of us. Uh, that's another one of the products that I'm going to cover today, but shows you why it's important for us to have resources and have those resources locally and available for us to be able to get a hold of. All right, so let's dive on in. What do you? What might you be able to use that's made in the United States? Let's start off by talking about the differences between designed in the United States, assembled in the United States, and made in the United States. So a lot of products are designed and engineered here, and then the manufacturing is sent offshore uh, due to price constraints or other things. A lot of people say they're willing to pay more for made in the U.S., but are they really? I haven't really looked to see if there are any tests to find out if there are two products side by side on the shelf and one says made in USA, whether or not that would matter. But it's important to me, so I hope this series will make it important to you as well. The other, the next level is assembled in the United States. So this is one that doesn't meet the number of number of individual parts that make up the whole that are manufactured here in the United States. So it has to be listed as assembled in the United States. And the next phase would be made in the United States. So products that are sourced here and made here. But you could pretty much argue that a lot of the products that I'm going to talk about are maybe start globally, but end up back here to be processed and put together. And how does that affect everyone? Even the designed and engineered side gives us the intellectual capital here in the United States and provides jobs for people, which is very important. We wanna make sure that the United States citizens are employed, making good money and making great products for us. So a lot of the products that I'm gonna talk about do have components that come from out of the country even my favorite one that we're going to talk about first. So let's jump right in. Product number one, one of my all-time favorite products that I highlight every week on this show because it's made right here in Sebring, Florida. A little pitcher-in-pitcher -pitcher action. This is to cover everybody's favorite, Strangely Warmed Coffee Company. I hope you're all having some right now. If you haven't, this is a, a locally roasted coffee actually right here in downtown Sebring. Um, I'm enjoying a cup right now as I do every morning. It, if Now they do use organic beans that come from a, uh, a farm in Peru and are shipped directly to us. And the other great thing about Strangely Warmed is that it's Christian based and a lot of the funds will go back into ministry. So fantastic company made here, uh, roasted in Sebring, packaged in Sebring. If, even if you order it on Amazon, that package is filled and sealed right here in downtown Sebring. So everyone should have it. These guys have worked out a contract with the farms who are related to our church uh, through uh, South America. Like many of the products I've talked about, the part of it comes from outside of the United States. In this case, look at my buddy Steve right there. These are beans that are purchased from Peru, shipped here. You can see part of the process going on right there. That happens right here in downtown Sebring, the magic of the coffee. That is our wonderful uh, coffee trailer that's parked at the farmer's market every Saturday from 9 to 1. So if you want to stop in there and you can grab whole beans, 
You can grab uh, ground beans. You can even get K-Cups. There's the roaster right behind Steve right there. They're even going to soon going to be packaging the K-Cups right here in downtown Sebring. So very exciting to have something locally. We have a few other roasters in Sebring as well. Um, and you can get strangely warmed at a lot of the local restaurants around town uh, that are now sourcing it as their primary wonderful cup of coffee to have. So if you get a chance, check them out. We love strangely warmed coffee, one of my favorites. And we'd love if you'd love it too. You can order it right from their webpage. You can order it at amazon.com. You can pick it up at uh, at First United Methodist Church in downtown Sebring. You can pick it up at Legacy Bicycles right over here on Ridgewood Drive. So stop in, grab it. If you haven't tried it, give it a shot. It's fantastic. I know you'll love it. Next product made in the U.S., my truck. Now this truck says assembled at the Flint, Michigan plant. As you know, there are thousands of components that go into auto the automotive industry and our vehicles. And we're starting to see the impact of that right now. You see that there are a lot of new cars that are sitting on the docks somewhere. There are a lot of components for new cars that can't be shipped in, specifically um, microchips. So a lot of issues with those from globally sourced products. So what I'm hoping through some of the pandemic and what's going on in Eastern Europe right now, maybe we find out that there's a lot more ways for us to cost-effectively move things onshore so that we're manufacturing them right here because it helps to protect us. If any of you have played video games like Warcraft or Minecraft or any of those where you have to go out and gather resources, you know that the most efficient way to build your community is to have all of your resources right here. It's something that's very important, but right here in Flint, Michigan, you can see here, I've got a couple of photographs of people touring the factory. You can even see a truck that looks very similar to mine right here on the assembly line and manufacturing hundreds of people in Michigan and hopefully revitalizing the whole automotive industry in the United States. And we know that uh, companies like Tesla and Rivian are starting to ramp up uh, production facilities in the United States. Chevrolet, one of the oldest in the country, making their investment there. They've also just recently, I read an article um, as I was researching this, that they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars up there to try to retool and build some, get some plants up and running. I'm sure there are a lot of factories there that we could start, uh, turn back, turn the lights back on and get them running. I know that Tesla has done that. I know that, um, that Rivian's trying to do that, start another plant. So lots of activity in the automotive industry and a lot, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the foreign cars that have foreign labels on them are also manufactured here in the United States, but I'm going to cover one of those a little bit later. We'll try and cover one car company maybe per show so that you can see where those vehicles are manufactured and try and hit them up so everyone gets kind of a taste of what's going on. Next in the lineup, a couple of things that are near and dear to my heart, Martin guitars. I love Martin guitars. I have more than one. Sometimes my wife watches this, so I won't, I won't tell you how many I have. Um, but I have a nylon string. It's not a classical, but it sounds kind of classical. So I love playing that. And it was from 1970, which is my birth year, which is fantastic. Um, but Martin Guitars made in Pennsylvania. Um, unfortunately, their plant, I, the times that I've driven by there, I haven't been there um, and been able to go inside because they were closed. But Martin Guitars, beautiful handmade. And this is another product that's designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States because a lot of the wood that they use comes from outside of the country. So they pick those things up in other places. Now, if you've ever followed musical instruments, you know that there's been a, a big change over a hundred years probably of sourcing exotic woods that aren't sustainable. And they've changed that over the years and try to find more sustainable products that give you the, the same vibrant sound as the old ones, but a lot of those things are still sourced outside of the United States. Martin Guitars case, these guys are handmade. They're beautiful instruments. Um, we also have the privilege in our county of having one of the most brilliant luthiers I've ever seen or met, and one of the most well-respected in the industry, my friend Kenny Blunt, um, right here in Sebring. So if you have an issue with a Martin guitar and you call the factory to get it fixed, one of the go-to guys in the entire industry is right here in Sebring, Florida. So 
he can re build them. He builds guitars from scratch. He can repair guitars. He doesn't do a lot anymore, but um, it's fantastic that we have these kind of resources right here in Highlands County. So I've hit up four of my favorite products today that are made right here in the US of A. If you get a chance to check them out, please do. Strangely Warm Coffee, my Chevy pickup truck, which is right out back right now. Uh, my Martin guitars made in Pennsylvania and Fender, Fender guitars made in Corona, California. If you get a chance to check any of those products out, please do. I will see you again, maybe in three or four weeks with another segment on Made in the United States. And I'll try to get more these were some fun ones that I really love. I'll start throwing some practical ones in. Obviously, cars are practical, but um, I'll throw some more practical everyday use products in, and I'll start doing more and more of those. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed Strangely Warm. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Coffee with Carlson. If you need to get in touch with me, you can call the office at 863-382-4141 or check us out on the web at carlsonaccounting.com. You can even schedule an appointment for me right there on the web page. As always, have a great morning and don't forget to have your cup of strangely warm coffee. Thank you and have a great day.